All right, what's going on everyone? Today we're going to be playing with the 2022 Challenger deck, the White Aggro Challenger deck. The catch is we have upgraded it for Pioneer. I have an entire separate video if you want to see how to upgrade this, but we spent less than the retail price for the deck to upgrade it for Pioneer. And if you're not familiar with this deck, it's basically a pretty standard White Aggro deck. You'll see a lot of stuff that you're probably familiar with, a lot of this stuff. We got Thalia. We've got Luminarch Aspirant, we've got Skyclave Apparition, but what's unique about this deck is we care about casting two spells per turn. If we cast two spells, we get a plus one plus one counter here. If we cast two spells, we get a one one flyer here. So our deck is tuned to try to cast multiple spells per turn by activating this to find more cards. We have Welcoming Vampire to find more cards. We have Assemble the Players, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's just a White Dagger deck that's caring about drawing and casting twice per turn i think we'll play a couple best of one matches first and then we'll play best of three so we can see the sideboard in action also technically we're playing explorer right but it's like 99 percent pioneer at this point there's a few there's like lotus field combo decks aren't really a thing but other than that it's basically the same meta and mostly i just want to demonstrate this deck way too many lands but solid threats i'll keep it and hope we don't draw too many more lands Going first is always nice. Okay, so potentially spirits or something. Play Thalia. It's a weird spirit to play. Isn't there like a... No, it's spirits. Okay. I was gonna say there's like a auras deck that plays this. It's just looking for a one mana one, one flyer basically. Is the only reason it's playing that. So probably just play Elite Spell Binder here. Because if this is spirits, they're gonna have counter spells. Okay. Um, okay, there's one counter spell, but spell queller might be the better choice. Hmm. Let's just take spell queller. They can still cast it, but it, you know, it costs five. Alright, that's fine. Supreme Phantom. Hits me. Um, I can't block. I, I'm so flooded, I can't, I shouldn't block here. Okay, so we can play this, play this first. Then play this. Get the extra 1-1. One, one. We're going to put the counter here so it can kill the Supreme Phantom. This seems fine to me. Yep, that's reasonable. They can get their Spell Queller now, but... Um, at this point, we're probably just making 1-1s one, because we're so flooded. Curious Obsession, sure. They still attack me. Interesting. Alright, take 4. Oh, this still costs 5 even at these. Man, I haven't played this card in forever, I guess. I forgot it still costs 5, even if the tank dies. Alright, well, that's cool. Um, so this doesn't do much. We're on the offense, so we're not going to be tapping it to, to get the counters. So I actually think it's better to get 1-1s one here and save... Uh, hmm, and save uh, my... My spell, so I can double spell with a uh, Clarion Spirit to get another 1-1. Another one -one. So I think we're just passing... I will trade my spirit with their spirit. It is a spirit, right? Yes. Alright, they attack. I mean, they have to, right? Or they have to sacrifice the thing. Alright. And then we will make a 1-1. One, one. Hmm, that's pretty good. So I think they, ha they have 5, right? So I think I pay 1 for this. See if they try to counter it with a spell quill or they do. Perfect. So that resolves, gets my Warden. Then we do this. That's going to trigger, get a 1-1. One, one. Take this. Get this back. And then I will put a counter here. And attack all. Yeah, nice. Oh, that was a, a good demonstration of how kind of grindy we can be. We're an aggro deck, and we can put out some very quick power. But we can also just make a lot of tokens, and you know, we have a lot of workarounds to make sure we can double spell a lot for the free stuff. Alright, we have a much more aggressive hand, but we're going second. Hand's fine, though. We'll play this turn one. Maybe play this turn two. We'll see what we're playing against. Um, I don't know what this is. Uh, okay, it's just Grease Fang, so we probably just lose in that case. Um, because Grease Fang is insane in best of one. So they have Grease Fang in hand. 
They just need to get... Okay, they don't do anything. So it's probably just important to get power out fast. Although having flying blockers would be nice. So maybe we just do this. And attack for one. Okay, so we lose if they get... Uh, what's my things? So this is where we want to play best of three. So we could hate out the stack, but they don't get anything. If they got a... Parhelion, we just lose here. But they don't, so that's useful. Oh, instant speed removal. I mean, I can get a blocker, so it's probably worth doing this. And this. I don't think... It, I, now, you know, now that I think about it, I don't think this was worth it. Um... Honestly, just having the instant speed removal up for Grease Fang is probably more important here. Although they can't get anything in their graveyard without spending mana, so they're not going to Grease Fang this turn. So down to 14. Do they have an instant speed way to mill? They do. Okay. Um, they get Essica's Chariot. That's kind of fine. Yeah, it's okay. So they can play Grease Fang, get Essica's Chariot. Yep. Sure. Okay, so they could get Parhelion here. Okay, they do. I lose. I, I should have just held up uh, Fateful Absence. So now we'll go to best of three where we don't have to deal with this crap. Um, I do... I, I complained about this deck a lot in best of one. It's shocking to me that that deck is still legal in best of one. But uh, it's still there. I don't know. But in best of three, they win game one every time. And then we just hate out their graveyard. And then the deck can't win at all. That's why best of three is so important. I, I know, I, I assume most people watching this are, are paper players, right? Because it's, it's an upgraded version of a paper deck. But, um, you know, if you're an arena player watching this, this is why best of three is so important. Also, going second is less punishing because we're going to be playing from behind this game. But we will uh, get to go first next game if we lose, which is nice. Tap land. Love to see it. We'll play recruitment officer. Definitely would have just played this. This is great at protecting stuff if you draw it late. But if it's in your opening hand, it's totally fine to just play this turn one as a two power attacker. Because we're an aggro deck, right? Um, That kind of sucks. It's a good blocker. By good blocker, I mean it has one power. Which is a good enough blocker against us. That's pretty good. What deck are we playing against? Obosh tells me it's like... Some sort of weird combo -y type of thing. I think we're just attacking. They can trade. It's fine. And I think we're playing Clarion Spirit this turn. And then we'll play Thalia Dauntless Bodyguard next turn. Fatal Push. That sucks. Thought Seize. That also sucks. Probably takes Thalia, I would assume. Yep. Reasonable. Alright, Clarion Spirit, that's pretty good. So we can play this. They just have a colorless uh, land up, so it's fine. We don't have to worry about, like, removal or anything. Protect this. Alright, pass the turn. Got two removal spells in hand. Five damage on the battlefield. If we draw another land, we can start animating the Faceless Haven, which is another four damage. Foulmire Knight, what a weird deck. What a strange deck. They get a colorless land though. So they can't uh, can't play that as a blocker. Which I'm fine with. That would be so cool if I had a one drop. Uh, we're definitely going to play at second main phase. Attack for five. What are the chances this deck is playing a board sweeper? We've seen a lot of creatures. We've seen three creatures now. So I'm going to assume they don't have board sweepers. Could be wrong. Obosh tells me they want to be some sort of like combo-y type of thing. This is a really cool Obosh, by the way. Sky Sovereign. What? I don't know what I'm playing against. I'm going to be honest. Got to be honest. I get maybe this is the best part about, uh, does it matter? We'll sacrifice just because. Sure. Dang. Need one more land. You're just not finding it. I mean, there's no reason to hold this for the double spell thing because we can play these if we find a land. Um, let's just put the counter on this. Attack for six. Alright, well, they're dead next turn. We can kill anything they play that can crew this. Valmire Knight, sure. 
They do have the Muta Vault as well. Something to be weary of. Aklazots. Okay, so definitely trying to combo. Do some weird stuff. That is delightful though. So, how do we do this? If they crew, they only have two blockers. So if I just animate th this, they block this, they block a 2-2, two -two, they still take six. So it's best, oh, but that they have lifelink. So I do have to just get rid of the lifelink. Yep, that is fine. And then we do this. Get two one ones. Put the counter here. I think we should just attack all. So they should kill one of my two twos. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it's still six damage. And now we go to sideboards because it's not best of one unless the opponent just quits. All right, so what do we, we want? Removal for sure. They're doing some crazy comboy stuff, but most of my removal, um. Most of my removal kills smaller stuff, so we definitely want these then. Because, uh, they're gonna make that- Oh, it's not creatures though. Hmm, do we have much to go for- Do we have much to- We don't really have too much to, uh... I mean, I guess we could bring one of these in. Yeah, I guess we're not doing too much here. I mean, th these, this exiles the small blockers. So, I can bring in, like, a couple of these. We want all the removal we can get, because clearly they're doing weird stuff with Obosh. So let's do, let's take out Intrepid Adversary and one Clarion Spirit. And, uh, let's take out one Recruitment Officer. Holy lands! Uh, no. That's just as bad, but, uh, I'll keep it, I guess. We got Faceless Haven, so, that's cool. Oh my god, another land. Well, we might be, we might be losing this one. It, it doesn't look good. We have to kill them with Faceless Havens, basically. Thossies, oh god. <laughs> well, there goes Luminar Gasprint. Alright. Attacking me, though, so that's interesting. Um, I think I'm just playing this. I'm not worrying about the counter. Attack for one. Field of Ruin can blow up my Faceless Haven. Still attacking, which is interesting. Don't 100% get that. Seems odd. They put Obosh in their hand. Uh, alright. Attack for three. Alright, pass the turn. Don't know why they're attacking with the 1-1. One, one. Do they need it? No. It already did its thing. So I'm assuming it's there for surveil. So you think they just trade with the Monk of the Open Hand. They know I don't have anything. Alright, hits for one. Okay. Sure. I mean, that sucks, but we have the Faceless Havens. <laughs> you think you wouldn't draw any more lands at this point, but we're still drawing them. That's alright. Attack for four. Down to ten. We probably gotta kill Obosh. So, yeah. Kinda sucks, but I think it's important for their deck. I think. And we can't animate an attack. We'll just play 1-1 one, one, or 1-2. One, we do have to be aware they have Field of Ruin. They can just blow up my Faceless Haven when I attack with it. Virtue, okay. Okay, they tap out. So that's good, I guess. Um, let's animate. Attack. Down to eight. Play this. End the turn. Don't know why they're attacking, but okay. This person's very aggressive. I mean, it. what does it do? It doesn't make me discard. I just have a land, so... Uh, yeah, we can play it now because they know it's there. They still have the Field of Ruin. They haven't used it. So... That's weird. There they go. They see it now. Well, the good news is... We're gonna have... Less little hands in our deck, right? So we're not gonna draw as many? Alright, attack for two. Down to six. Play this. Sure. Goes to five. Draws a card. Murderous Rider. And it's pretty good with the life link. There's no way. Alright, more lands. Let's just animate this. Go to combat. 
attack for four. I guess I could have... No, I couldn't have. It doesn't matter. I get, No, I could have played this first and then activated the recruitment officer here in response. Yeah, it's too late now. All right, get this. And we still can, I guess. No reason to do it now, right? Because they, they can make me discard whatever I get here. Foulmire Knight. So many lands have we seen? Three, six, seven, eight, nine out of uh, 16 cards. It's pretty bad. All right, let's activate this. Skyclave Apparition's cool. Um, probably Spellbinder, though, so we can attack. They're at four. So let's play this. Let's take a look at their hand. Two Thought Seizes. All right, we will take one and make it cost a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to play the land. Maybe we can draw that Thought Seize out. Nope, don't want to attack. We can activate Recruitment Officer, end of their turn. We kept this card in our hand. Um, that sucks. So we can't attack with Spellbinder now. Um, anything I can do in response? No. We want to activate this end of turn so they can't get, they can't use Thought Seize to get the card. Alright. Activate this. Another Spellbinder. It doesn't do as much now, but it doesn't do basically anything. I guess we'll take the Apparition. Oh my god, it's more land. That is quite incredible. So probably play this, take the Death Touch blocker, I think. I just don't want to deal with that. And if they use Sky Sovereign to kill it, they just get a 1-1. One, one. And I guess that's fine. Technically, I could activate this, get a 1-drop. I'd rather do it at end of turn. I'm looking for the sideboard card we put in that can destroy... Artifacts, the Cathar thing. Cathar Commando, right? Sure. Surveils. Foulmire Knight into the graveyard. Makes a 3-3. Uh, three, three. They definitely need to be careful about attacking because, you know, I'm... I could kill them on the backswing, sure. They attack all out. They're just attacking for 6, okay. Never mind then. Yep. Alright, take six. We might be losing this one. I'm new guy. Giga flooded. Alright, we'll activate this. Welcoming vampire. Sure. So we can play this. Play this. Draw. We'll protect the vampire. It's another land. Alright. Well... No attacks in the turn. So we can block the Sky Sovereign. Give this indestructible. Yep. Alright. Okay. So we definitely need a blocker here, right? Alright, so we'll sacrifice this. Give this indestructible. Okay. So I think I'm dead here, right? I can block here. I have six I can't block. No, I have eight I can't block. So even if I block the highest that I can. Oh, that's not attacking? Oh, so I can live then? I take three, six, seven? I don't know how I win. All right, we lose just barely. I, I, I wish I could see how far the... I don't, there's only one copy of the adversary. All right, so now we're on the play. We want to go fast. So we probably want some of the clunkier stuff out. The commando is less necessary here. I think I want one warden out for one of these. I'm taking out one fateful absence. We're going to add two of the extraction specialists. Now that I'm on the play, I'm expecting to trade with my attackers. Holy crap, it's the slowest. The slowest hand ever when we're on the play, unfortunately. But I'm expecting to attack into Death Touch blockers, and then the Extraction Specialists are good in that case. Speaking of which, there it is. It's like I... And there's the Extraction Specialist. I, it's just like it's what I said. Thalia is interesting. So let's 
attack into a death touch blocker. So is it extraction specialist here or elite spell binder? I think they're just going to put Obosh in their hand. So I think I'm just going to get the Clarion Spirit back. And if we draw a land, that'd be pretty cool. Sure. All right, get this back. The cool thing is it doesn't need to attack or block because it turns it off to uh, get the spirits. So that's nice. So best possible top deck would be a land or a one drop. Either is fine with me. All right. Well, we get the land. So in that case, we will, um, we got to play this first. Because Thalia will make it more expensive. Then we'll play this. Get the one, one. So you see how we're playing much more aggressively when we're on the play. They do have that board sweeper though, which could be bad. Path to Peril is uh, not good for me here. So we definitely want to play Elite Spellbinder here and make that more expensive. Yep, that is fine. See, it would be tempting to do this, but I'm worried about the board sweeper. We'll play this. If they don't have the board sweeper, we'll make Obosh more expensive. They have creature tokens get minus two, minus two. Which, I guess it sweeps my my spirits, but I don't care that much. So we'll just choose Obosh. Make sure that doesn't come down for a while. And, yeah, we just attack. They can trade the 1-1 one, one with the 3-2. But that's just what we're doing. We go to 26. They go to 14. Thossies kind of sucks. You know, it can hit welcoming. Like, both of these are pretty good. Best possible top deck would be a 1-drop. So I can play either one of these and get a spirit from this. Fatal push is pretty good. They sacrificed that to draw. Did they dis- wait, what happened? Oh, I don't know what happened. I don't know why they didn't- wait, why didn't that resolve? Oh, they, they targeted it without having- right. You can choose illegal targets with fatal push. Um, it could only destroy stuff with mana value 2 or less. But they were still allowed to target this, which they didn't have, uh, ha ha they, they didn't have Revolt active. Kind of a weird UI thing with, uh, Magic Arena. I will say, I, by default, I always play best of one when I record Arena just because, oh, by the way, you, you want to see what I want to see what I've been working on. Guys, Challenger decks, they're coming. Uh, my process is I, uh, I import the stock deck into Arena. I do a lot of play testing and stuff in Explorer, and then I finalize the deck on a deck building website because not all the cards are here, right? I just want to get like 90% of it done on uh, Arena, and then we uh, then we finalize once I uh, you know have an idea of what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, that I I I was saying I got distracted, but uh, I was saying I I play best of one in Arena videos because I think it's like when I'm showcasing a deck, right? When I'm like, hey, look at this deck I built. I just want to showcase that deck against a variety of decks, right? I want to show, you know, here's this deck against a red aggro deck. Here's this deck against a, a green stompy deck. Here's how the deck plays against a, a control deck, right? But man, best of three is just such a better experience in my opinion. It was really interesting that we played a not a tier one deck and got matched up against not a tier one deck. Whereas best of one is just like endless tier one red aggro no matter what rank you're at. So that, that was interesting. Anyway, uh, the point is, that is how this deck plays out. Now, I, I do think maybe Monk of the Open Hand is a little bit weak, but I do think uh, Clarion Spirit is actually very relevant. The 1-1s one are just nice. They're nice to have. And it's not that hard to trigger. I mean, our, our curve is so low. So, um, yeah, that's how this deck looks. This old standard Challenger deck. This is what it can look like in Explorer. Can we upgrade it more? Maybe. Our weakest cards, ironically, are probably uh, the double spell things. But, uh, yeah, overall, it still feels not bad. I did that. It doesn't matter. I did that in the wrong order. Uh, so that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. More Challenger deck upgrade guides coming soon. As you see, this is basically the order that I'm planning to do them in, I think. So, uh, yeah, more coming soon. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.